he had so many museum, this was in 2011, so he had so many museum exhibitions and things going on that we kept pressuring him, but nothing was happening. I think he saw this as his little pet project that he could take the time he needed, and we were fine with it as well. At a certain point, we kind of, uh, you can maybe keep going. One, uh, that's us in Nigeria, I thought would be a nice, then next one. That's the, oh, that's a, uh, see, this is him with the um, termite mounts, and the one before is the nests that the chimpanzees make. They make one nest, uh, one nest at a time to sleep. Every night they make a new nest. You can go, you can go, and go. And these are the tools that we were given, more than a thousand, and they've said that we, if we need more, we can have more. And, uh, go, go for it. Oh, okay, stop here, yeah. And um, so one, this winter, maybe in November, I don't know, when winter started, a PDF came through. We thought the project wasn't happening anymore, and we just received maybe 30 pages of PDF, and it was one work after the other, after the other, after the other, and I said, I think the project's happening. And he, he, he traveled to London, and we wanted it to happen in London because of the UCL, of the university. We wanted it to be close to the heart of the, of the project. And we, I, I, we, I was looking for an art space, but it's very hard to propose a, being an independent curator to get an art space, because there, there's a lot of curators today, and people have so much short budgets for their own projects. For an independent curator to come from outside and ask was really hard. So I took him to the Camden Art Center, and he said, no, let's go to the Freud Museum. It's very close by, I want to go there. The Camden Arts needed no the Freud Museum, so we spent a long time at the Freud Museum, and I had some talks. And anyway, it's happening at the Freud Museum. They they gave us three months of the summer to show. It's opening tomorrow, and here now I'm going to show you some of uh, Damien's works. I'm not sure now. I'll talk a little bit about his work. He uh, he's well known for working with tools and with uh, how how systems of thought are made, how things are built. He, he, he works with, uh, he looks at objects and goes back to see why and how do we, do we see them, do, how do we perceive them, how do we think about them. Maybe it's better if we go to uh, this one. This is, the Freud, this is Freud's uh, consultation room and he has convinced the Freud Museum to hang in the middle of the, I'm not sure you can see it, but there is a tree that we bought, brought from Nigeria, and then there is a piece of, of, of wood, which is a stick. He, we brought the, the, the actual tree that a chimpanzee took from a, from a tree to make a tool. And he, we think that this, this is a very nice space for it because it's where, he says it's where the thinking process begins in an office like this. And then it's like taking a nerve from a, from a hole. one of uh, Damien's, he's very interested in tools and in this exhibition he's always also um, looking, he's uh, influenced by, this is, he calls it homage to Calder and he has an homage to Boetti and he's, it's, a, it's a sculpture, it's a, a tool but that relates to art and tools. Next one please. So this is um, how we go from the primal and how so you have one piece, and then the second one is two pieces, is a, a tool made of two pieces, and then the third one, it's a tool made of three pieces, because you have the, this part of the scissor, this part, and then the nail in the middle. And what we're looking at is how we can be so basic, we could work with so much basic uh, objects, but we have become more and more and more complex, each time our instruments become more complex. Next one, please. I'm just giving you a, a small preview. There is a lot more than this. this these are uh, these are tools that uh, he bought in the market in Nigeria. It, it, they're fabric. They're made from trees and they're fabricated by the Nigerian uh, people. And he sees in these tools the basic geometric forms: so a square, a triangle, and a circle. Next thing. This is what I was telling you before about uh, these questions, how to see, and then the next one. 
how to make illusions in the next one, how to think. This is um, what he's saying is what, at one end is the good intentions that come into our brain and then at the other end is all the bad intentions that are so prejudiced, uh, misinformation, uh, therefore a lot of bad intentions that we perceive. Next one. This is one, this is very, um, I'm not sure you know his work, but this is very uh, Damian Ortega, is this, uh, it could be many things, it's a composition of colors, of material, uh, if you think of the cables that when we cut a, a TV cable and it has all these uh, colors, it's just a combination of the system. Next. This is, a, this is an old work of his, it's from the 1997, it's called uh, Tired Pickaxe. I think the title says it all, but it's it's just to show you this this work is uh, one of there's two historic more historical works of his in the exhibition, and this is to show you why we chose him a little bit and how he has been working with tools for a long time. Next, and this is just to finish up. It's it's a sneak peek at the show because he did a, this is just a study for what he did that what's actually there. He's made a DNA. Uh, hooks with the, the with the with the chimpanzee tools, and this is what it is looking at. I think uh, just two seconds at my notes. I think what what's very important from this project is this the bridges and boundaries that are created between art art and science, and that's what we're really interested in. We're interested in you know the scientist is desiccating materials, is desiccating thoughts, and the artist. This was when we talked, me and Volker, the artist looks at things in a way that are more subjective, more nuanced maybe, and this goes back to Freud and how our psyche is in, a, is in the heart of our existence. Um, I, think, I think that's all. I, I think that's all. Come and see the show. It's really interesting to see how all these uh, binaries are, are looked at through Damien's eyes, you know, human and ape and how close we are to them more than we think. Thank you. Thank you. So because we are, you know, we, we ran late a little bit, um, I think we'd be good to open for uh, the audience's questions. Um, so um, anyone would like to ask something? Well, while people think about their questions, perhaps... Um, um, question. The question, um, to what extent is it relevant in the way you publicize about those upcoming exhibitions that you mention or admit to mention that the artist is from Latin America? Um, well, obviously, we're in a, the context of a, a fair which predominantly focuses on Latin America, so this is what connects each of these exhibitions, but um, from my point of view, something that we're trying to stress with the exhibition of Mira Schendel at the Tate is that she was a Brazilian artist, but she was also, in, to many uh, degrees, a European artist, and her roots are in Europe, and her, her early experience was was very important for the foundation of her work and her study of European philosophy was also very important but then it goes through a translation in Brazil and also the work of Willem Flusser who I mentioned was very important because he was also seeking a new place to find a different reading of questions of being and existence in Brazil that liberated it from the context of, of Europe that he had also experienced and then also moved away from that and then later in his life returned to. But, but I think that dialogue between Europe and Latin America, or Brazil and, and different locations in Europe is actually very important, not just for Mira Schenter's work, but for a number of artists and within the context of modernism and of contemporary practice that still exists. So I think there is something important to be acknowledged, but I don't think that it's like 
also saying an artist is a European artist, that's something, but it's not a, it's not a answer to what their work is about. <laughs> So thinking, I mean, I think it's obviously very exciting that uh, Kiki and, uh, and Kathy, you know, I think that brought us here together to talk about these exhibitions, which happen all almost at the same time. Uh, and so it's almost like it's maybe a coincidence, or maybe it's a morphogenetic field, as Robert Schoenberg would say. Um, but I, and you know, that obviously by necessity means that we have contextualized within, you know, the context of these artists being Latin American being shown in London. But I think one of the things which it, what Lisa always said is that I think, you know, even in the context of total globalization, very often every artist or photo writer has a very specific place, you know, which is important for him or her. And very often, I mean, a continent or even a country are very big entities, uh, sometimes even like imaginary entities. I mean, I think it's Benedict Anderson who said like a nation is an imaginary entity. And so for Edouard Bisson, you know, it was just a rock. Because, uh, you know, he referred always to this rock in Martinique, where he's thinking somehow, you know, connects to it. So in his case, it was a rock. And, you know, in the case of Adrian, it's this brick farm in Rosario. It's Rosario, it's a city, you know. And I, I always think, I mean, sometimes it's very interesting to scale this very big entity down and maybe talk more about a house or about the city. Adrian's exhibition, what date? Uh, the date hasn't been completely fixed, but it will be in uh, the second part of September, and it will be then on until, uh, you know, late October or November. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so, um, I think we're playing on time here, <laughs> so thank you very much for, for coming here today. It was great to hear you talk about the exhibition.